Veronica is a brand that, for whatever reason, doesn't seem to get much love amongst the film photography community, although I'm not complaining because it's keeping prices low. They make a wide range of different medium format cameras, including their 645 SLR cameras, the ETR series. Like any self-respecting intro to medium format camera, the ETRS shoots 6x4.5 negatives on 120 film, which gives you about 15 shots per roll. By default the camera comes with a waist level finder, I have mine kitted out with a side handle and prism finder which kind of turns the whole thing to a sort of big boxy SLR. It's not quite on the scale of the Pentax 6-7 but it's got some heft to it, bludgeoning your enemies is definitely still on the table. For someone looking to step into medium format, this is kind of the perfect camera. With the handle and the prism, it's a very familiar shooting experience if you've used any 35mm SLR. If you get a metered prism, you can shoot in aperture priority mode, which is perfect if you're too poor to afford a light meter, or just in a hurry. By default the camera comes with a 120 film back, although you can also get backs for 35mm, Polaroid and 220 film. Although these days I think that 220 film is probably about as easy to get hold of as Quaaludes. You can replace the waist level viewfinder with both metered and unmetered eye level prisms, which I think are pretty essential to be able to get the most out of this camera. The waist level viewfinder is fine, but since the film backs don't rotate, it basically locks you into shooting landscape orientation. The side handle is less essential, but I still think it's a good addition because it makes the camera much easier to carry. Without it, it's basically just a brick. Perhaps the true benefit of this camera though is the price. It's significantly cheaper than both the Pentax and the Mia 645 cameras. I'm not really sure why this is, because they all seem to have fairly similar features, but I'm not complaining. But as I live in England, we can't have sunshine without some doom and gloom. So here are a few issues and complaints that I have with the camera. The first is a relatively minor complaint. When you attach the film back to the camera, there's a little pin that engages to tell the film advance mechanism that you have film loaded. One time, when I put the film back onto the camera, this pin didn't engage and so I wound all the way through an entire roll without it ever clicking onto the first shot. This has never happened since, but I did still waste an entire roll so I thought it was worth mentioning. The other, much more important issue, is a really weird one that happened to me earlier this year. So I took the camera out on a fairly cold for the UK day to do some shooting, I was happily snapping away, unable to feel my hands completely carefree. I sent my negatives off, and when I got them back, there were about two usable shots on the entire roll, with the rest looking a little something like this, or just being completely destroyed. Upon some further examination, it turns out that the shutter in the lens wasn't firing at the correct speed, it would just sort of fire at a completely random speed, regardless of what you had the camera set to. I have no idea why this is, if it was linked to it being a colder than usual day, or what. But uh, in the end I just bought a new lens because that was cheaper than having another one repaired. 
I'm not sure if either of these issues are common or if I've just been very unlucky. Perhaps I displeased the film gods by shooting my porter at box speed. I don't know. But worth mentioning because I don't want to pretend that it's just been plain sailing the entire time I've had this camera. So here's what the camera looks like, or here's what my camera looks like. I've got a few accessories on it, like the meter prism and the grip. I'm going to kind of walk you through the camera and take it apart so you can see what's what and how it all works. The grip, as I said, is I think quite a good add-on to this camera because it turns it from being a kind of uncomfortable box shape into much more of a traditional SLR style camera and it's got a shutter release and a double stroke film advance whereas normally the uh, shutter release is down here so you'd have to kind of hold it like this and press like that and focus which is just a bit awkward this is much more comfortable on the hands the metered prism apart from obviously allowing you to use the camera at eye level rather than with the waist level finder also allows you to shoot in aperture priority mode so on one side of the prism here we have the ISO selector dial which also has exposure compensation and then on the other side here, we have the mode dial, so you can check an aperture priority or manual mode. Very important to note, if you set it between the two, that's off. That means that the meter in the prism is off and will not activate. I didn't realise this for the first three months that I owned the camera, so I just left the meter on the whole time, kind of slowly draining the battery. Uh, the meter is activated when you half press the shutter, either on the grip or on the body, or if you push in this bit here at the front, if you're not using the handle. Um, but I mean really, if you're going to get the prism, you should probably also get the handle. Now that I've talked a bit about those, I'm going to go ahead and take them off. So to remove the prism, you just push this button here. I'm going to try and do this upside down. Slide it back, come straight off and then you can see the waist level finder like so. To remove the handle, flip the camera upside down. Turn this from locked to open, push this button, and it will just slide off, like so. So this is kind of how the camera comes, its default setup. Obviously you'd normally have the waist level kind of focusing screen here, and the film advance, but I haven't got those on. Um, this little lever on the side here is the double exposure lever, so if you flip this, when you, um, when you wind the advance mechanism, it will bring the mirror back down and recock the shutter, but it won't actually advance the film. So if you turn it like that. Um, this also allows you to fire the camera when there isn't any film loaded, which I'll do now. Pop the dark slide out. Wind on. There we go, but now you can see mirrors popped up. So if I wind that down, mirror comes down, ready to go again. But um, yeah, if the double exposure lever is set to the normal position, then you actually can't fire the camera without film loaded. This dial here is for selecting your shutter speed, as you can kind of see in the window there. It goes all the way from 1 500th of a second all the way up to 8 seconds, which is uh, pretty amazing. There is no bulb mode built in, although there is a T mode on the lens, but um, I've never actually bothered to use it because it's a little bit finicky. Screen for a shutter release cable is here. This camera system does use interchangeable film backs, so I've got one on here now. You can actually if you have a dark slide inserted, pop these off and swap them out mid-roll so you could switch films without having to finish the whole roll. Um, I've personally never taken advantage of this because I only own the one film back, but I do see how it could be useful. Unlike certain other Mamiya systems, these film backs do not rotate, which is another reason that I think the prism finder is so useful. So the dark slide here, which you have to remove before being able to take a photo, with the dark slide inserted you cannot fire the shutter, so you won't accidentally waste a frame. Um, you also can't remove the film back when the dark slide is removed, which again stops you from accidentally destroying your film. So if I pop the dark slide back in, push this button here, and the film back just pops off. This leaves us with just the camera body, which is literally a box with a mirror in it, uh, and the lens. The lens that I have on here is a 75mm f2.8. Um, it's probably the most common lens, there are quite a lot of lenses for this system, but this is the one you'll probably find with the camera if you buy one online. It's uh, it's pretty good, it's standard lens for 645, no complaints really. Aperture at the front here. Um, these lenses are leaf shutter lenses, which does mean that the shutter is in the lens, and that means that you can sync flash at any speed, which is nice. To remove the lens you've got a button at the front here which you have to turn, push in, and then turn the lens like that, and off it comes. 
that leaves us with just the camera body, which is, yeah, kind of just a box. Uh, the battery compartment is at the bottom here. The camera actually does require a battery to operate at all, even if you haven't got a metered prism attached. Without a battery, the shutter will only fire at 1 500th of a second, so a battery is required. Um, but the batteries last quite a long time, I've never really had any issues with that. The Bronica ETRS is a great camera. I'm hard pressed to think what more you could want out of a 645 medium format SLR. With the amount of modularity in the system, you can set the camera up to match whatever your shooting style is, whether that's slow and methodical with the waist level viewfinder and an external light meter, or quick and dirty in aperture priority mode with the metered prism. If you're looking for a 6x4.5 medium format camera, then the Bronica ETRS is a very solid option. But like all good things, my committed relationship with my Bronica ETRS is coming to an end. It's... it's not you, it's me. I've met someone else.